Next session is um, about dynamic uh, dynamic forms, and of course, that's you know that's uh, that exists for for custom objects, but not for standard objects. And uh, Narendra is going to tell us something about that, how to um, yeah how to to uh, deal with that and have a workaround for it. So Narendra, you ready to share your screen? Yes, let's do it. So am I the host? Let's check. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, you can see it now. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, yep. Yep. Audio loud and clear? Roger that. Got it. So, hello, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us. So, the today's topic is slightly simpler than restoring and backing up the data. So hopefully it's a lighter session for you guys. So the topic for today is about dynamic forms, forms which I'm pretty sure all of you might be familiar with. And we also know what the session is going to be in a sense that how we are going to work, how we are going to create a similar setup for standard objects that we get for dynamic forms with custom objects. So let's roll in and who am I? I'm Narendra Singh, I'm a Salesforce developer working at Sales5 Consulting in Berlin. And I'm also a blogger at forcepanda.wordpress.com I'm also a part of Einstein Champion, which is now called Platform Champions. And these are my Twitter and LinkedIn handles. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you want to engage in any conversation. More than happy to engage. All right. So let's take a step back and see how dynamic forms came to be. So this was not just the sole effort of Salesforce, but the community asked for it so badly that Salesforce was kind of forced to deliver it. And this is the idea which actually still not fully delivered, which is very surprising. 14 years old, uh, 100,000 plus points, a lot of votes, a lot of merged ideas. So you can imagine how badly Salesforce ecosystem or trailblazers in our community needed this. So, and Salesforce presented us with dynamic forms. So let's just address by uh, addressing the fact that dynamic forms are great. Basically what dynamic forms are is they allow us to render information on page layout based on some criteria. So let's just quickly take a look at how dynamic forms work. So I'm going to switch back to my org and I'm going to open up a record in Salesforce, basically a lightning page, lightning record page. Now, this is a custom object and all I had to do was click on the setup icon and click on edit page. So this is the page that you get. Now, if you want to use dynamic forms on this page, all you have to do is select the fields tab in the left pane, and then you're gonna see of something called field section. So basically, field section, section is a part where you can put your fields and set conditional visibility on that field section. So if I were to say, render event name based on some criteria, then I would place a section like this and just drop a field in the section. And then I can click on the section. I can make it one column if I want to, and then add a conditional visibility, which makes it very easier for me to render information on the page layout based on some criteria. Now, 
this is how you can actually work with dynamic forms. So let's quickly switch back and see what lies ahead. There is a but. So we just said that uh, dynamic forms are great, but <laughs> the problem is that they are only available for custom objects. So very disappointing, but it's true. A lot of folks, including me, were hoping for dynamic forms to be available for standard objects in, in Spring 21, but unfortunately, that's not the case. So hopes are, fingers are still crossed, maybe next release. All right, until then, what we can do? And before that, let's see how the world was surviving before dynamic forms. So the most common when, if we talk about ancient times when we were used when we were using classic interface, the most common non-development based approach was to use multiple record types with multiple page layouts. And then we switch the, multi we switch the record types based on some automation when the criteria is met. And other than that, we have been using visual force pages and lightning components to address conditional visibility and a new function or a new feature that allows you to create a similar setup is by using a combination of quick actions along with conditional visibility in lightning experience can get you something close to dynamic forms. So with that, let's take a look at how we can actually set this up. Yeah. So let's Take, a use, take up a use case before we jump into the demo. So let's, we have an org which has got leads coming in from different sources. Let's say go to webinar, LinkedIn, website, MailChimp, along with some information that is stored in some custom fields. Now, Katie is a Salesforce admin at this org and Katie is tasked to figure out a way to show only the fields which are relevant to the lead source. And she has been advised not to create sections on the page layout. And the reason behind this advice is that as, as the org grows, as if you, as let's say, if you have many sources coming in, you have more sources in your lead source, then you might be end up creating a lot of sections for each lead source. And then your users are spending a lot more time just crawling down up and down through the pages, trying to find the right information in a bunch of information shown to them. So it's not advisable to create sections in that sense. So let's see how we can actually solve this use case. So I'm gonna head over to my org and I'm gonna go to setup in setup. I have navigated to the lead object. And in here, I have a field lead source, which has some source web, uh, go to webinar, MailChimp, LinkedIn. So the idea here is to create different, idea here is to create or show information based on these lead sources. So the first thing that we need to do is create some quick actions. And these quick, quick actions are, go are going to serve as a layout for us to show the information that we want to show on the page. So let's say we want to show some information for GoToWebinar. Now you can add fields uh, that are specifically relevant to the GoToWebinar and just save it as it is. For now, I'm gonna just, for the sake of keeping it short, I'm gonna say, let's just do name. And, or maybe just lead stairs, yeah, whatever. 
So I'm going to quickly save this. And I'm going to create one more action. So let's just create one more action. Action type has to be of for up, has to be of type update a record because the information that is coming in is for a different is for the same object. So it has to be uh, update a record type. Let's call it Mailchimp. Save. Let's just keep emailing here for the sake of simplicity. Save. All right. Now I'm going to switch back to my sales app. And go to leads if I have leads. OK, I do. Now I'm going to edit the page and add the quick action that we created on the page. So how we do that is by using a standard component called related record. So this is the component that we want to, that you would want to use in order to show the information. So let's just put this. Maybe here. So in here you can see the update actions that you have and you can simply choose them. So since we want, let we created two actions. So I'm going to add one more related record component to the page and I'm going to select MailChimp and now we are going to just simply set a conditional visibility and make it appear for lead source. Go to webinar. Okay, go to webinar, done. Similarly for the other one, we can call this GTW details and let's call this, uh, what was it? MailChimp, MC details. And then set a conditional visibility here as well. Each source equals uh, MailChimp, done. All right, and we save our page. It's saved, let's go back. And now we are going to try and switch the lead sources and see if we can surface the information based on a criteria. So at the moment, nothing is going, nothing is showing up because the lead source, I assume is black. Yes, it is. So let's try and switch the lead source to go to webinar. And if you see, the go to webinar GTW details is now appearing on the layout. And now let's try and switch it back to MailChimp and see if it changes. Yes, it changes. We get the MC details just like we wanted to. So you can use this in your orgs today, right this moment, without really having to rely on dynamic forms in your 
standard objects so with that i would let's go back to the presentation and i have some resources i believe the presentation will be shared by the admins of the group in chatter or somewhere and with that thank you so much hope you find this useful and maybe if we have some questions we can take them up now